Ah, here we go. The final divine beast. Not the hardest one. I, I feel, um... Uh, Var Naboris was harder than this overall. What about you, Maxi? How would you rank the Divine Beast in terms of difficulty? Hey, little guy. Eat. So, uh, Rudania probably you took know, me the longest. I, I had kind of just an issue with its You're specific gimmick with like Rudania going up, up on the again, walls and hey? stuff. Yeah. So, but I wouldn't even I wouldn't say that You're one was the most map difficult. Map I think the camel was the Nabarus may have been the hardest for me. Okay. But I but yeah, between I'd say it'd be between that um, and this one and Rudania. So this would I, I guess would be now the hardest. But nothing too challenging. Ooh, spooky. I was gonna say that this one though does have the best atmosphere for like its boss fight. Like, yeah, the giant elephant pump in the lake is a cool aesthetic, but you know, giant salamander robot in the crater of the volcano. This is this is some chef kiss qualityness. I definitely remember getting here, and there was this one little thing I got stuck on, and I legitimately went through and was like, did I freaking? glitch or something because i remember something in the darkness just not working or not being visible and i thought to myself frick did i like screw up it, it did is is there a problem with my game and then i was like oh no i was just you know not thinking it through which uh also happened to me in twilight princess because um in the uh the arbiter's ground that room with the invisible rats that you need to detect uh. as uh as, as Wolf Link there, I was like, I thought my game was glitching out, because I'm like, how come Midna starts freaking out, and then I randomly die? Like, what's going on? Like, I didn't get what- I didn't get it, and then eventually my friend's like, dude, it's invisible rats. And I'm like, it's invisible, what? <laughs> yeah, I think I, uh, fell for that meme as well. You don't know until you know. <laughs> And it's so well placed, like in that game, because for a while you kind of get into the Zelda groove, like you sort of forget like some of the gimmicks, like turning into a wolf, even though you get the ability to like freely switch right before it, but you haven't really needed to use it until you get to that room, and you're like, oh wait, yeah, I, for I have the whole wolf thing, and then then you continue, then you don't die. Not dying is good, yes. I mean, it's the best, but it's always fun, too, when a game throws in a random just murder room. Uh, you see it sometimes in, like, the survival horror game. Silent Hill 3 does a whole, like, murder room where you just go into one specific room and just... If you don't leave, your life's eventually just gonna fall and you, it kills your character. Nice good old murder room. Yeah, here we go. That's a nice bit of preamble to the dungeon proper, I think. So one cool thing is uh, if you do get the glow-in-the-dark outfit from um, the Gerudo town, uh, you will be lit during all this. Hey. I mean, a good improper dab beforehand could do the same thing. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm more partial to an inedible about half an hour before to be thoroughly lit. <laughs> Nice job getting the map of the Divine Beast. Nice dab reference. Oh, if there was any champion who would dab, it would be Daruk. The terminals that control he does the it gun. all the time, and he does it for validation from children. Like the <laughs> See, I feel like Daruk does it as kind of a jokey thing, but I feel Yonobo unironically thinks dabbing is cool, and oh like does it, <laughs> does it seriously. <laughs> this is the best. I love I love characters' dab politics and where they fall on the dab politics spectrum. <laughs> you just put the image of Yonobo attempting to floss, but he fucking can't because he's a big old fat rock guy. <laughs> Oh man, they put Ryu in Fortnite, and seeing him do some of those dances is so funny. But the better thing is they just announced the alien from Alien in Fortnite, so seeing that floss is going to be amazing. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. A chest for war. Two chests for war. Fortnite allows us to do the same thing that Smash Bros. allows us to, and allows us to, to power rank our characters by how hard they floss. Ah uh, yes. Cool. I feel like you could have put 10 arrows in one chest, but whatever, you do you. 
You know, there was some intern who was like, I'm going to make them feel like the next reward is going to be something else. You know, they, they, they really wanted you to, to be surprised. So, shout out to that, that Nintendo intern. He only has two. That definitely contributes to the, um kind of the ease I found with the puzzles of this dungeon is you literally only have two states for uh, each, uh, you know, for this guy, whereas others you have way many more. Huh. A door there. I think we might be, uh, we might be getting that one later. dum de dum dum de dum even some of the Valbrida puzzles, they were, it was almost timing based on getting the water to go on the wheel and then off the wheel. So, versus, like you guys said, this one just had the two states. It just kind of just confused me for a bit when I first played through this dungeon. So I actually opened this before getting the, um, the map there. So you can come into this room while it's still in darkness. And uh, it got real confusing trying to figure out exactly what I, what I was meant to do. Oh, what? You tell me you broke the sequence of the intended gameplay, my dude? Wow. You messed with the natural order! <laughs> I'm gonna hold you and never let go! God, Grim Adventure is like, man, yeah, it's the best shenanigan memes at this point. I, like, it, it, I love when culture evolves and the good shit gets the good memes. No, I want to climb. Mm, but if you were to flip Rudania around, then you have a little area to walk through. Ah, uh, yes, absolutely right. Now we're thinking with 3D puzzles. So you actually didn't need to stasis it uh, because it would have just stayed there. But by stasising it, by him turning, it like <laughs> freaked out. I know. You stay there. The, the true Hyrulean physics. That is make them extra aerodynamic, you know. I am glad though that there isn't just um, there isn't really a dungeon that can be solved by like doing some weird like positional shenanigans where your character kind of just ends up floating in the middle of the of the dungeon to kind of like hurl himself to a location. Kind of like kind of like how some of the Sheikah ones. I know like the the ball puzzle from this, the one where we flip it upside down. I think it'd be kind of funny if there was one dungeon where it's just, ah, if you shake it really hard, you can just throw Link to where he needs to go and you can just ignore all of it. Ooh, nice. Uh. Oh! <laughs> Indiana Jones moment. That's two. Oh wait, we had a we have a counter of that going in this playthrough? Nice. Right, let's get moving. <laughs> no, he means the terminals, not Indiana Jones moments. Aww. That would be very specific, and like when we eventually do an Indiana Jones game, there's just no talk of Indiana Jones whatsoever. It's gonna mostly be us talking about online shopping, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, QVC, as it was in the UK. Now you're thinking with not portals. There's something else, really. It's all the blast processing that the Switch allows. Or, sorry, the Wii U allows. I have an idea. Oh right, I remember having trouble getting to figuring out how to get this one, then I look it up and it's just like, just flip him and jump. And I'm like, oh, I I think I brought the block out and like was trying to stasis the block to be in midair to climb on over it. Oh. Yeah. Alright, so I wasn't the only one that thought that this was just like a shenanigans answer, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, you know, it's important to sometimes remember this game is rated for the children, so you don't need to go giga chad brain. You just need to solve them kind of regularly. Portal speedruns have just ruined the way I look at puzzles in general. It's like, why can't we just go through the wall? <laughs> why can't we, Maxi? Why can't we? Okay, I'm kind of confused as to where the other two are. 
Uh, so, uh, there is one in the main hall. Uh, you'll need to be in the main hall and then have it flipped, and there's a ramp, uh, which you actually just kind of skipped over, actually. Um, so you, yeah, if you go down here and you take a look, I think, up, you'll see a little, yeah, right, see that metal block there? You walked right over it. Yep, that one is involved. So you actually entirely skipped the ramp because you flipped Rudania and, and finagled your way out of it, so... Okay, so we gotta bring up a ball from there to here. So now we get this entirely new emergent way of doing this dungeon. Like, your one transgression has caused a ripple effect. Now the dungeon's completely different. We have no way to help you, Tom. The guides mean nothing. Oh, Jesus. Ah, there it is. But I need to bring a, a blue flame from there to here. Yes. Now there's a blue flame, but uh, how the hell do I get back outside with one? Uh, well, the good, I think if you get that on a, um, get it on a, a torch, uh, you can just walk up the path that you were at previously, and that takes you outside there. Uh, blue fire's got different properties, so it won't blow up in our face. Hopefully. Will be nice. It's like one the list of things not dying and not having things blow up in my face. Dum de dum. Ha ha. I'll give another flippy dip. Oh no. Look at me being all marathon runner with this shit. It's just like the Olympics, except not cancelled. Oh, oh no. Like, if they could do it in the middle of an active volcano, you could do it in the middle of a pandemic, alright? This is true, but if we held everything to the volcano standard, Tom, things would get a lot more difficult for all of us. I know. Don't gotta tell me twice. Careful, your ready. torch is on fire. Oh no. And not the fire that we want. That's kind of a counterintuitive message. <laughs> it's, it's, imagine that type of alert. Walk into a wall, yeah, no. I thought I was going to fall off for a second then. Oh, you're going to need to pull it because it's uh, currently stuck in the corner. Is it? I think it is. If you just go back up the, uh, <laughs> go back up the ramp again, then you can just pull it down with Magnesis. Huzzah. Yeah, so they're not hard puzzles, but they, they do involve a bit of moving around. They definitely feel out of all the puzzles in the Divine Beasts. Like this one in particular, you use the whole thing from the top to the bottom. There you go, little rolly ball. Oh, it didn't even need to be pulled. He was all good. And it's good! It's good! The crowd goes nuts. Alright, now direct me to the last one, because it's always these two that get me. Yeah, so this one is, it's outside, uh, and you go up the ramp there to where you just kind of were, and basically, like, right before where you jump off to the blue flame where you lit out there, uh, you just glide on down to it. <laughs> okay. Tyler, where is the, the malice I need to kill, mate? Alright, take a look up, because that's where they're located up there. Aha. Uh -huh. So then that, that is also the, uh, the platform that will have the thing on it, so when you flip it now and stand on that little ridge, you can go. Oh, just be careful, you want to be on the other side! I'm good. I'm good. I'm scared. Flip it again and get back up to that other one. I definitely, that was one problem I had with this dungeon, is whenever I do the flip, I forget which way he flips. So I'll be like, yeah, I'm good to flip here, and then I'm like, oh wait, no, never mind, I'm on the wrong side. <laughs> it's not helped by the whole cylindrical design, like... 
You're not too sure if you're closer to the head or closer to the tail sometimes. Ugh, I probably might have on the daily. Right where you were there, if you flip it right there, you'll be good. Okay, come on. Like fly wolf. Yeah. And then once you uh, reach the one there, the, right that one, once you uh, get to the middle of it, then flip it again so that uh, you can fall uh, down onto the little platform there. So yeah, right right there. Take like one step. And then flip it again. And be very careful to not fall. Just don't even touch your glider. You're good. <laughs> dungeon done. Congrats. The dungeon's done. But we do have one final nice. obstacle now awaiting us. Ah, yes, we do. Now go ahead and start up the main control unit. In your own time. There should be a new glowing mark on your map. You're gonna need to They're so satisfying once you have the map. Master Sword. Like, I remember Stay the first time, just like, I was confused guy. what was going on. And then the second one, I was not looking forward to the boss fight. But once I had the Master Sword, like, alright. It, it's sort of like a... It's like walking in, cracking your knuckles. It's like, let's do this. Well, especially if, Tom, you get your HP to full, uh, one thing I'd recommend is uh, then you put on the Master Sword, uh, and then if you use the throw button, uh, what you'll do is you'll shoot those sword beams, which definitely help, because this dude likes to stay up in the air. I see. And as we said, uh, another thing you might want to do as soon as the fight starts is uh, take out one of your... Um, uh, fireproof elixirs and put on your best armor, specifically uh, your iron, uh, or rather your diamond circlet, because guardian damage go down. Ah, yes. I argue that that's not his best outfit. I say, but no, I actually don't know. I mean, we could dress up as a phantom from Spirit Tracks, which is like, we, we got that, and it's real good, but it's not the best, like, for actual defense. No, I want to change my answer. The Guardian outfit is the best one. You're right. This lad is huge! It's taking over the whole damn volcano. The whole thing. He has so much hair! Wow. This must be the timeline where fucking Hyrule Warriors happens in. Right? <laughs> Good luck, little guy. Go get him. Do you think he uses, like, product? <laughs> has to. There's, I mean, it's canonical that Sephiroth has to, so, like, that destroys the illusion for all video game characters. What? When, when, when the ultimate skirt, when the scourge of humanity has to use seven bottles of shampoo and conditioner, it... Everyone else must use something. There's no way. Yeah. Ah, uh, I'm on fire! I thought you had flame guard on. Well, all right. Not this heat. This is different heat. I guess maybe not. Very interesting. I'm okay, though. The burning has slowed down. The burning has begun to move. <laughs> Ow. Pocket sand! Damn it. Okay, he's within sorting reach! Remember, your jump attacks also deal double damage. Just throw the Master Sword. Oh yeah, look at, look at us cutting through like butter! Hot, melty, butter. Excellent for Keto. Yeah, I got more fire now. How about if I light this on fire? What if it was purple? He's doing the legendary strategy of uh, the, the sword cast from Final Fantasy V. Oh, there you go. I know how to handle this. This took me a while to figure out how to actually do it. I was experimenting with every other, you know, rune, trying to see what it is you do. And it's like, no, just throw a bomb, because he's sucking it in. Yep. And the bombs are fairly light, so they do get sucked in. And I was like, oh, I never considered that. Holy but a goodie. And Ruzel the puzzle. Solve it using bombs. When, when in doubt, uh, just, you know, bomb. 
Oh, right in the Ganon Gooch. Oof, never say that again. <laughs> Bye. That was easy. Ah, oh, no. Why was I weak to ice? It's a volcano! I have the best hair still, though! When I die, I want it to be like this. Violent and explosive. <laughs> Note to self, give Anton violent death. No! <laughs> I, I mean, a natural death. I just explode like that. It's like I'm just doing the crossword in an old person's home. It's like, oh, ah, four across. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you just stub your toe wrong and <laughs> just end up exploding. Oof. <laughs> Little mushroom cloud shows up. So when you said a little mushroom cloud, I imagined like a toad dressed like Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> it's just like reality edits over Anton's gruesome violent death now with a toad image. Oh, bless. And there we go. All four divine beasts successfully demalaced. Hooray, this timeline has been saved. Though you, you can just begin it with none of the divine beasts. So, I mean, if you just take care of the malice from the source, take care of Ganon, you don't have to deal with all of this divine beast shenanigans. None of it. Great work, little guy. It's me. I owe you big for this. Because of you, my spirit is finally free. Can't thank you enough. I feel like I should apologize. So which of the uh, four, or basically groups of four MacGuffin uh, to beat the game Zelda items, mess. did you guys like better? Do you guys like the Giants of Majora's is, Mask, or the Divine Beast of this control. game? Huh. Well, actually, yeah, I was about to say, why did you choose those two, but, you know, four and four? Uh, I'm going to say the Divine Beast. I think the fact that the Divine Beasts at least have different designs, I think that's a cool thing. I think if each of the four giants themselves got, like, themed designs and then they work together to throw the moon back, I think that'd be really cool. Because um, them, like, their designs are just kind of... It's kind of weird. I don't, I don't really like the designs of the four giants. They're enigmatic, bro. You're, you're not supposed to know what they really look like. Hadouken! Kinda just brought them up just for more that number. But yeah, no. I like the Divine Beast for individual designs there, but I do like the Giants just kind of more for just what they do, what they serve in the game. Yeah, the fact that there's not a lot of info to them or that they have the same design is From just more to the game's design credit and I feel just more to the game's the atmosphere of, of how, like, you don't really you. know everything that really goes on in term. Like, you're supposed to be left with a million Good questions luck, about this other guy. world that we never go back to. And give my regards to the princess. Even in death, he is a valiant knight. Sorry about talking over your heartfelt cutscene about another Zelda game, by the way. Well, it's Goron bro. Like, he has the ultimate bro-ish send-off. Yeah, if any of them would be fine with us talking over him, it would be Daruk. Rigali would be fucking pissed. Oh, he'd be so mad. <laughs> what do you mean you're not paying attention to me? Kaka! That makes me lay an egg, so it does. Oh, it's fucking salamander hours. I do like its uh, demo gorgon head too. The way it splits open like that, I think that is a rad design choice. Goes all Jurassic Park. Meanwhile, the gorgons down there are like, ah, oh, it's Varudania. Oh wait, he's blue. Ah, oh, it's Varudania. <laughs> it's causing the volcano to erupt, regardless. Oh my God, it does have nipples. Uh, who mentioned nipples? Ah. Oh! <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, that ought to do it. We're set here. Now we just gotta wait for the perfect shot. Once Link is in the castle, 
Plutania will unleash an epic blast. War. Epic. That makes me want to floss. Alas. Giant rock guy. High rule looks pretty good from up here. Even after a hundred years. I mean, it's constantly in a medieval period, and they went through the Dark Ages with the Calamity, so... Can you imagine being like, man, Hyrule looks good, its frame rate is stable for once. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's all loaded. Oh my god. Am I seeing shit? Am I seeing shit? Hey, look at that. <laughs> I want to be just like, I completely forgot I fucked. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> I ain't paying alimony. <laughs> <laughs> I meant child support, never mind. I'm gonna say, couldn't they just pay their child support in rubies? Um, no. The IRS doesn't count rupees. We're not in India right now. <laughs> Michael J. Fox laugh, cut to credits. <laughs> <laughs> if there was ever a Breath of the Wild live action movie, I'd want to hit Michael J. Fox to voice Shinobo. There you go. That's a choice. There's been worse casting decisions. Hell yeah, Daruk's protection is now ready to roll. Oh, so good. Such a good power. I You don't end up using it a ton if you do the Goron's last, but it is just it just makes your life so much easier to have, you know, a real strong defensive technique. It also helps for all the times you miss time or just generally fuck up. Like, oh, thanks, bro. Thanks for helping out with that. Oh, it's going to be an epic clash, so it will. All right, let's get our swag and get the hell out of it. Oh, hey. For all he knows, there could have been someone else. Dealing with the malice inside Redania. I mean, he saw us go inside. He didn't see us do anything. Character development for Yunobo here. He keeps this in Age of Calamity. And that's nice. Because of where it's... Uh, and I feel like we've got to the point where we can just kind of openly talk about Age of Calamity. Uh, you know, having that thing where it's like we have the... You know, the, the newer generation come back and help the older one, but their post-characterization, it really helps with even expanding more upon, alright, now how are the, you know, the new ones? They're holy hotness, that's what I'm thinking too. I came all the way to the volcano to find a BF and you say no. Or you just say K and leave me on red. It's a good fun little character building time loop. It's fun to see that with Ocarina of Time's whole Song of Storms time loop, Nintendo just wanted to keep going with that. And now they're just throwing it all around with their characters. Just making it integral to their backstories. I don't actually know if I have ten pieces of Amber, but I'll sell. It's, it's a good chunk of money. Hell yeah. Now, I believe she uh, has a different jewel requirement every day. Yeah, every once in a while. There we go. Hell yeah. What's up? I would have been in there if it weren't for this blasted back of mine. If I didn't get addicted to opiates. <laughs> oh my god. It's those damn crystal rocks. Oh no. Did you snort Garnet? What did you do? <laughs> Can you imagine if, like, there's, like, some subplot in, like, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 where it's, like, dealing with the fact that it was the Hylians who, like, implanted the painkiller rocks on the mountain oh, and now no. all the elderly ones are addicted to it and it's, like, <laughs> you must face the consequences of, of addicting this generation of old Gorons. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then what's Link's answer to that? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Link. Valuable input. <laughs> the ultimate political response is just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I must be fucking saying things. It's all the opiates you see. 
I saw a comic earlier this morning, which was like, it's Zelda holding a gun, Smash Bros. Zelda, and she's like, I, I don't know which one of you is my Link. I need one of you to say something he would, and it's all the Smash Bros. Links, and they're like, Hut, see ya! And then there's Kirby Link, Poyo, and then uh, Breath of the Wild Link goes, see ya! And then he shoots Breath of the Wild Link. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, that is that is a powerful tool, uh, not just for attacking, but boy, geez, will it absolutely demolish any rock, including rock creatures. Hell yeah. Now, lads, we have a few things to do before we call this session to a close. Let us go visit a certain Tarrytown. Yeah, I love Tarrytown. Let's do it.